I'm Jen Manis. I'm the field crew leader on the Weddell Seal Project B009, and we're at our field camp at Big Razorback. These are our four fish huts that we live in. We have two sleep huts, an equipment hut, and a kitchen hut. We've got solar panels on the roof of the kitchen hut, and that's where we get all of our power. It's all solar. We have two phones, and we also have wireless internet. Well, we're standing on top of the sea ice, so we're basically on top of the ocean. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is Big Razorback Colony. It's one of our biggest seal colonies. We've been tagging all of the new pups born in the study area for the, about, for the past 40 years. And with that, we can track reproductive histories of moms to see how many pups they've had, how often they have them, and also if their daughters come back and have pups. We can have their whole reproductive history of a lot of these females. We tagged this pup a few days ago, so it's probably three or four days old. And right now, it's um, basically feeding every day, trying to get big and fat. These pups are weaned, and they're about 35 to 40 days old. And by that time, they've probably gained about 200 pounds. And also in that time period, the mom will teach them how to swim. He'll start learning how to swim in a week or so. How much they weigh, how much the moms weigh especially, have a lot to do with, with their pup survival. Um, their mass has a lot to do with different life history traits as well. And different life history traits are things like survival and fecundity, which is how many pups they have and when they have their pups. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the mass dynamics of the Weddell seals. And I'm looking at their weight when they're born. And there's a big variation between pups and between moms and how big the pups are when they're born. So we want to look at why there's a big variation. This research project is one of the longest running projects ever done on a long-lived mammal. And the reason why that's important is we can look at reproductive histories and we can we can look at how many pups a mom has had and we can look and, and determine whether that's a good mom or a bad mom and what makes them a good mom or a bad mom. Or we can try to figure out why they may have only had two pups in their lifetime and why some moms have 16 pups in their lifetime. And we can look at when they start having pups and we can also look at if their pups have had pups and if they're passing on good genes. And the reason why that's all important is because we can use our ideas and what we find out on this population on other long-lived species in polar regions or in other long-lived species that even live in the desert because most long-lived mammals have the same sort of life cycle and the same sort of reproductive strategies. They just form them in different ways. 